for about another hour. Uh, Tracy and Ashley are on stream. They are in the bathroom. Uh, and I am going to refresh my water so you all can look at my adorable butt or whatever for a minute. While what the heck I, are you doing? Uh, wait for everyone else to come back. What are you, what are you doing, Alexis? <laughs> da, 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 da. I should probably I should probably change the character. Is your camera on while you're hanging around here? Yeah, he she can't hear a thing. Is it Apple's <laughs> ASMR? Is it ASMR? If I, if I eat this, is this ASMR? Can I get money? Eat these? <laughs> on stream. Like, what, what will get me the most money, everyone? <laughs> okay. Uh, Might want to change the... I, I, just, I think the... What's the word? The category personal trainer math might not be the best Why? category. <laughs> Because it's not what we're doing. I'm training them in math right now. <laughs> Are we now? Let's be into math. She was even to a CQ of 5D's Willy Breakers on the Wii. Here's all for Roses has actual artwork. Okay, we're gonna play uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monsters Coliseum on the PS2. <laughs> I'll let you paid. Have you too. Even if you are a trickster goddess. I'm a trickster goddess. Known for your many shapes. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to change the stream output to having only mine. Eating an apple with lipstick stream. <laughs> Very entertaining. <coughs> you know what? Fuck being soft up me. It is entertaining. I'm entertaining. I'm iconic. There you go. It is an honor for you to sit here. And watch me eat some dang apples. All right, cool. Looks like it's up. Remember, what? read some visual novels and eat some apples. Okay, so we got about an hour left. So we'll probably play Heaven with Mine for one hour. And then um, people in the comments can say which game they'd like to see us keep playing. I own both these games, so it's not going to be an issue. Um, we will continue Pokemon XD. I just wanted a little break from Pokemon XD for Fram slash February. I feel like, you know, doing some gay games, interspersing it with some gaming is a good idea. Um, I'm also looking at checking out Heartbeat because that looks cute. Nice. That's the last game Pokemon, right? Yeah, but we talked about maybe doing it after we beat Pokemon XD. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, if we get bored, then we'll obviously stop playing Pokemon XD. <laughs> yeah, well, after we beat Pokemon XD, or uh, at, at the point where we get bored of Pokemon XD. Neither or. Let me lower the volume. So we have good audio levels here. Okay. Ashley is our resident have will be mine expert. She's written several articles on the topic. She is she is the definitive expert. <laughs> she may very well know more than the developers at this point. <laughs> So, we have three pilots, right? Yep. So we have Saturn, 
faction celestial mechanics. Self, ship, string of pearls. <laughs> Do you want me to go through? Yeah, so celestial mechanics test pilot. Celestial Mechanics wants to advance humanity to its next stage, and Saturn wants to flirt. But there's no reason we can't do both. Combat-style button mashing. Bedroom-style button mashing. Mm. <laughs> Faction. Memor Memorial Foundation. Ship self. Mayor Christenham. <coughs> Foundation Memorial... Memorial Foundation Ace Pilot. Fighting for the pilots to join the rest of humanity back on Earth before it's too late. Oh yeah, actually doesn't say it's Luna Terra. <laughs> Good at sniping, espionage, double crossing, ghosting, bad at, loving herself, and everything else. <laughs> Faction, Cradle's Graces, ship self Cron Macula, we have Pluto. Cra Cradle's Graces ultimate weapon pilot. Even if Earth has given up on a new life for humanity in space, Cradle's Graces hasn't. And Pluto will make that dream come true. Likes, succulents, good girls, crushing, both kinds, and everyone. Dislikes is trying very hard not to have any. Aww. She's just adorable. Pluto <laughs> is the best. They're all very attractive. This mm. one looks the most like me, so I guess that's who I go with, unless you two have a different preference. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, I'll go with that. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to hear just get everyone's vote and the stream's vote. If you want. Press F for respects. What, what, what's your take, Ashley? Um... I'm, uh, yeah, I'm fine with playing uh, any character. I, I would feel guilty about playing Pluto, I guess, out of all of them. Uh, in terms of I, being so... Hmm? Uh, guilty? But yeah, because uh, it doesn't, doesn't match, because Pluto's got some important stuff. Oh, okay, so you, you think Alexis I should be playing being... someone else? No, I think you should be playing Pluto. I yeah, would yeah, feel I would guilty. Play Pluto. That's why I pick, would pick yeah. Pluto, so I could play That's what I said. I said I would feel guilty about playing Pluto. Mm -hmm. Um... Ah. But in terms of uh, the, what character's route we should go down first, I actually suggest not Pluto, because that's like playing the final boss first. Okay. Ah. I would say it, you play either a Saturn or Luna Terra first, and then play Pluto, because it may, gives you a better uh, idea of what Pluto's up against. Okay. Because that's what's kind of cool. Because otherwise, uh, with Pluto, it's it's get, can feel like you just go in and just win all the time. Luna Terra, um, I'm, I'm most familiar with through your artwork. <laughs> um. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's go with Ashley's interest. Luna Terra. Oh. Who's going to play Luna Terra? Ooh. As in voice. When I say play, I've been meaning voice. No. Uh, um, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I could take Luna Terra. <laughs> okay. okay, that means I got, I've got Saturn. Saturn. Yeah, okay, there we go. Easy picks there. There you go. Minotera. <laughs> Memorial Foundation, Never LPS. In the division of exist of existential safety, conflict enables se ship self. Archetype model, first flight, July 16th, 1989. 69. Six 69. Nice. Nice. <laughs> uh. Where's the manufacturer? The Memorial Foundation, International Space Foundation, and all humanity. Until no one is forgotten and all are remembered. Registering pilot. Welcome, pilot, first class, Luna Terra. Error, multiple maintenance issues and critical errors detected. Notice, launch permissions are locked until addressed. List errors. Maintenance errors. A possible sense of failure. Several Seth. limbs are not registering. That's not good. No weapons are loaded. Oh, and uh, thank you, Kasumi Kase, for following. Uh, they did that at uh, 12.57, but it, I just want to mention that. Yeah. Hey. Uh, critical errors. Mass alert one. Healing failure on critical area. Near core possible bleed. Tidal core is resonating at all levels. Harmful to the harmful to the pilot. Ready. Manual firmware update. Running. Upgrades detected. Synchronizing. 
Accepting manual internal mechanism firmware uptake. Switching ammunition to go. Custom sensors loaded. Dynamic limb optimized loaded. 1981.177 weapon loadout drivers loaded. Details mass alert 1. I bleed 2. What? Recording derived from data burn. Fourth dimensionally onto the moon. Yes, it is very scary. Uh, surrounded by the unit almost one year ago. It's like blasting directly into my ears, too. Yeah, it gets a bit loud this early bit. You might want to turn it down. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I can hear it. Not from like the regular. Oh, yeah, I can hear it from my menu in here. Yeah, like. Yeah, you're, like, direct. I, I turned on the stream for a second. It's like overpowering you a bit. Yeah, I was trying yeah. to scream it out, basically. Yeah, the, the early bit is, is very loud. Okay, is this it, better? It chills, it chills out after this. <laughs> Surrounded yeah. by this unit almost one year ago. Moon self generator by f forcing overloading tears. The core open during sustained conflict in Mars Ares aggression campaign. Okay. Overload is increased pilot strain. It is strongly recommended that you seek assistance for a full maintenance team. A lack of understanding to the full effects of the gravitation gravitational conflict of the human guest all means that this computer cannot provide adequate information. Destruction on therapeutic measures. <laughs> Permanently disable mass alert one. Really ignore? Why? <laughs> Provide reason. I can handle it. <laughs> I'm not scan alerts. That is, is not for a good reason. Would you like to provide another? No. Mass alert number one disabled. Detailed mass alert too. Oh, hi on. Tidal reactor has unauthorized modification, but is causing an unstabilized chain reaction. This ship is not equipped to handle prolonged operation at this capacity. Increasing short-term output may cause long-term failure. Loss of gravitational stability may cause fracturing of instability in pilot. Permanently disable mass alert 2. The mass alert 2 <laughs> cannot be disabled by pilot authorization. MF key code alert disabled. Correct <laughs> confirms this. Please input the reason. I'm fine. <laughs> Ship self mayor serum is in spacefaring condition. Perfect. You are clear to launch. Going fine. Stable launcher OS and gauge catapult. All control is given to pilot. There's a message for you. Cancel. Refused. This message will be automatically played. <laughs> Europa. Let it be known that if you keep this, uh, that if you keep this, is my gift to you, Luna Terra. Your favorite and loosest leash. Prove to me that you learn not to croak, choke on it. Incoming message. Sending so orders updated. If it's that urgent, it's too late. If it's not too late, it can it can wait. <laughs> oh, how, how should I be playing Lewis Harris' voice? Oh. Uh, I don't know. She's she's the oldest character and the most like jaded. All right. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> but that she's the one who. But compared to the other two. Okay, just to, uh, I'm, I, I guess this is kind of spoilery, but th this is a nice way to put it into perspective so that Alexa, that, so that uh, Tracy can play the character, right? So Luna Terra is the one who has actually fought in the war against aliens. Okay. Since the beginning, because her, her robot is like one of the oldest robots. So she's actually like spent more than 20 years fighting aliens to try and save humanity. And now humanity is like trying to screw, screw over the people who've done that. Saturn never got the chance to, so she's. Right. That, so yeah, yeah. I think she's uh, the last generation. And Pluto won the war on, against the aliens entirely on her own. <laughs> cool. All right. So, Luna so that's the sort of difference of their scale. You've got sort of like war hero, super pilot, and sort of prototype. Sort of never got to actually prove herself pilot. Okay, I got. It. Let me show it to you. Okay, let me lower the volume even more here. Alright. Okay, okay, I think I can do it in-game now, finally. 
Music. Down. Mm -hmm. You're beautiful, even though there is only so long you can watch them. Where you switch the six planet spring, come as boring as blue sky, mere coliseum sensors, readers, reading them in every detail, using every sense, as perfectly as you always has. You really are getting old, aren't you? Both me and you. Should probably listen to control and throw you out and get a new one. That doesn't seem right. You're only supposed to get one body. And if I haven't been very good to you, I could never throw you out. We're all we've got. The Mare Chrysium is a test type model. It has been made as a proof of, uh, made as a proof of concept. It isn't the first vessel made to grant human locomotion and first life in space. It is the first to allow for outward expression. In all kinds of ways. It can do so many things. And they gave it the device for everything because they had an estimate estimated how powerful a triangle engines would become. Or what sort of things humans would really want to do in space. It's the first machine meant for conflict, but it's also the last machine that was meant for other things too. A ceremonial tin soldier made in impress. An impossible to use machine, mind machine or biofeedback interfacing with the necess uh, is, is necessary to give humans control over a second body. But the Mare Chrysam is done completely manually. Whoa. It makes Luna Terra a sort of genius and a sort of idiot that she can't do things out any other way. And having so much fun, it's hard to believe it's going to be over so soon. Now, I love it when old things are over. And new things begin. Open the channel. Let's hear those standing orders. Uh, actually, when I take this log... So, wait. so this is... <clears throat> It's January the 1st, 1980, and the long, cold war where humanity united against its nemesis, an existential threat from beyond the stars, has been over for a long time. Since the 50s, we have been fighting a war against an existential threat that we cannot understand, cannot perceive, and is powerless against the technology of Earth. That's a pretty stupid sort of war to fight, isn't it? When there's enough of a mess down here to worry about, humanity is already the undisputed authority of reality and we have phys the physics to prove it. It's time to return to Earth, Earth symbol, our home, the seat of the universe. Before Earth takes us back in pieces, let's go home with grace. On the first anniversary of the decommissioning of the International Space Program, we, Memorial Foundation, Native Sphere Existential, Sa yeah, Existential Safety, in agreement with our home planet's unanimous decision, declare there is no future for humanity in space. Let's come home. The Return Resolution Memorial Foundation Native Sphere Existential Safety. <coughs> every every three things you get, um, every chapter you get three statements from the three factions. Right. So, it, so this one's crazy. Great. It's January first, nineteen eighty one. It's been one year since we've declared independence from Memorial Foundation and the rest of Earth. The Cold War is officially over, and it feels so light without the, their gravity weighing us down. How can a handful of tiny colonies, terraformers, and schools ha hold out against the full authority of Earth? Because that shit don't fly past escape velocity. To power our ship cells, we made to fight the Cold War, we made tidal resonators and to bring the gravity necessary for humans and culture to survive in space. And that gravity is ours now, enough to make a new world, free from the weight of Earth. If Memorial Foundation wants to kill the future, they'll have to come and take it from us. We're thankful for our Cradle's Graces, but we're not coming back. The Independence Declaration of Cradle's Graces. It's January 25th, 1981. Haha. <laughs> Memorial Foundation and the Cradle's Graces have been having fun for a little over a year, and nothing is breaking the stalemate. Earth is getting impatient. They have good reason to believe that the existential threat posed by divided humanity in space is much greater than any theoretically malevolent entity outside the native sphere. While the kids are fighting, Earth is getting ready to list the humans remaining in space as part of the existential threat, and when they do, they'll send real weapons, 
and end this war fought with plastic toys. The justification? We are technically less than 100% human, and just not an human enough to be something else. It's hard to believe they're really onto us. It's time to make a dr drastic move. Bring our final piece, the prototype ship self string of pearls we made in the atmosphere of planet Kronos, which will never be Saturn. So the lunar gravity... Oh, yeah, oof, this is a bit of a weirdly... Pretty we bring our final piece, the prototype ship self the string of pearls we made in the atmosphere of planet Kronos, which will never be Saturn. Hmm. Oh, that's a double sub-clause. How American. <laughs> to, the lunar gra to the lunar gravity well, where Memorial Foundation and Cradle's Graces are already headed. Whoever controls that place controls human access to space, and we can be sure everything will be in place there. Earth or space, we're just short of 100% human, so let's see how much less than 100% we can get. Internal <laughs> report, Celestial Mechanic. Ah, yes, it does feel very good to me, Lucy. Mm. Day one. <laughs> well, you've got the three factions already. It's essentially the end of Zeta Gundam. <laughs> We have mail alerts, calm, data log, alignment, system. Mm -hmm. So mail and alert are emails that you can see. They're different for each character. Right. Comms happen between each mission. They're between the main character and their handler, which are different for each main character you play. Data log is backlog. Alignment shows how the decisions you made have shaped the current conflict. And system is for saving and everything. So if I click alignment, I can see like where it stands at the beginning. Okay, no, this is not standard. Yeah, which is yeah, zero for everyone. Mm. Okay. Okay, as I start with mail. Just come and get me. Combat <laughs> communication packet. Author error. I assume that's uh that that one character. Which one character? The one that you're playing. Because it seems cocky. Actually, I don't think so. Oh, I not. think no. I think this is another character okay. because of where she says okay, where I'll, she I'll, says they're going yeah. to meet. So yeah. I'll, okay, I'll, I'll write it. I'll read it then. Oh, you think you're so cool, don't you? Well, watch your back, cause I'm coming for you. Think that number one position is gonna last? Not a chance. In fact, why don't we have a little duel about it? If you're not too scared, come meet me in the shadow of Olympia Mons. And I'll help make you sure that you're the one who's left splattered and helpless and pinned on the side of a mountain and not me. Like the last nine times. <laughs> you would, and would it kill you to like stick around a bit after, you smug jerk? Not that I'm planning on losing. This time, I'm going to beat you. I actually think that might just be a random admirer. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Well, well, we'll see what happens. Cold War. Uh, if you want to read the report, you can. Yeah. Cold War Ace reports Luna Terra, author at Memorial Foundation Existential Safety. She was unremarkable. I did not remember her at first. We took any of those who wanted badly to live in space and did not fit on Earth. In retrospect, we were asking for a rather unique ability. And it's not just a coincidence that she was there. The pilots had to be young adults, pass a physical, and not care what space might do to their body. It's not so surprising that someone like her would emerge from that pool of people. But the woman you know today has been iterated on since she was an adolescent. Be assured, I saw nothing of promise in her when I first met her. I told her that myself, as I told all the students. I am uninterested in your potential. We are judged by the self we create. And I find that encourages brats not to take their specialness so seriously. It was not Luna Terra's problem. Piece by piece, she created someone very interesting to be. We gave those children permission, and Luna Terra was simply unique in her execution. She was never encouraged. She was never punished. We will never find another prodigy like Luna Terra by looking for tidily sensitive children, because they do not exist. We will never find them pre-made. They must create themselves. Was this not the dream of the Memorial Foundation space program? She trans. I <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't want to reveal stuff, so I will say, but okay. yeah. Surely, surely everyone on this stream can say, that sounds like someone's saying. Mm. How many characters in this game are trans? That's my question. How many, it depends on what you say, because there are plenty of, arguably any character conceivably trans, but there are several characters that are straight up confirmed. Yeah, well, mm. can, how many characters, not the names, but how many characters are confirmed to be trans? Just numbers. Let me count. 
Like confirmed three. Confirmed three. Okay. Nice. I think I think confirmed as with as in they say things that mean that there is no other interpretation. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, in a way, I'll... there are. Do you want to do the last one? Or... Yeah, I'll take the last like... one. Earth is not uh, a subject of justification for a turn. Earth is not the sphere of our home planet. It is not the physical body which is called Terra, the home of life. It is not measured in mass or by its gravity, its position in the universe. Earth is us. We measure Earth by culture. We are the Earth, humanity, the particles of its mass. And by our gravity, its body is formed. By our diversity and multiplicity, Earth exists. The living miracle of humanity's shared power is insignificant unless we are joined. This international space program, which represents all across Earth, represents it represents all of us Earth. It represents our commitment to peace that humanity will never seek again to destroy itself. That humanity has the right to eternal light, invincible bodies, and unrestricted movement in space. As humanity expands beyond this sphere, as extension of the universal human rights of life, culture, and freedom, protect the growth and the sanctity of all culture, and ensure a future for humanity and the feet of our enemy. On this day, we inaugurate the International Romero Foundation Space Program. Yeah. All right. Okay, we got all those. So these can be from like any time in the story. So like, True. so ooh. Ooh. so he wants to play Europa. Whoa. Okay, I, sorry, I just clicked. Yeah. So yeah, I thought like, I was gonna get I've options. Paid, I've never paid anyone in my entire life. <laughs> okay, so I'll play Europa. So you really have betrayed us, haven't you? I've never played anyone in my entire. Ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> ha, ha. But seriously, whose side are you on right now? It sounds so accusatory to put it like that, you know. I'm fine with you being on whoever side you choose. <laughs> so I can destroy them and drive you, them, you back to me. That may end up uh, being a lot of people. What, you don't think I'm up for it? Uh, she's the director of combat operations for Mortar Foundation Institute. Yeah, she's the one who wrote the second uh, email, email we read. Uh -huh. Don't worry yourself about that part, kitten. If you want me to defect back, you'd always just ask. <laughs> oh, sweet girl. I'm not interested in you coming back just so, so you can walk away again. <laughs> How many times did Halamede fall for that? I didn't. I shouldn't count as checking for her. She knew it was coming every time. Oh, stop it! I hate it when you're being modest. It's so beneath you. <laughs> Give her at least the dignity of a subtle seduction. <laughs> I would have. That's not what she wanted. She really ought to think about her reputation more. And what more is there to say about the trail of messes you leave? But my di disappointment in you both is total. <laughs> my adorable failures. What am I to do with you? You should go easy on her. I live to spoil her. Make no mistake that everything she deserves will be visited upon on you. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of not letting you have that. You have to know by now how aware I am of what you want and deserve. <laughs> You're so good to me, Europa. I don't deserve it. When I double cross you again, be sure you really let me have it. I hope you do. <laughs> but I take no chances with loyalty. Halamine merely hopes you will change. I think it's charming that even you believe you that one second. Halimede merely hopes you will change. I think it's charming that even you believe that might have some effect on you, but I know much better than you, kitten. I won't let you return, no matter how much you beg, until you have no other choice. When you can't pivot or run or trick your way through, when you can't second guess or lie, that's the only way to change that nature of yours. Europa's generally a lot nicer than that. That's about as mean as she gets. <laughs> well. <laughs> but she's sort of like, she don't put up with any of Lunaterra's, like, vagueness bullshit. All right. You want to, like, 
do like let's do let's get into a scene here. Yeah. So I would suggest that we can split it. So each each of these big scenes generally is to do with um, the main character meeting one of the other two main characters. Mm -hmm. So that means we can split it in person playing is that Tracy can always play Luna Terra. And then we can play our characters and whoever's left over can play the narration. Okay, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. That sounds cool then. <laughs> Who are we meeting today? We can, that's Plu Pluto. And the other one is Saturn. So we're going to see Pluto. I don't need to do this. Then click delay. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, that was... Yes, I can pick it. Okay, so Saturn or Pluto? What do you think? Uh, what do you think, chat? Yeah, yeah, you two on chat. Um, do you have a preference on who we meet, Pluto or Saturn? Uh, retrograde and retrograde is chasing after a string of pearls. Lunaterra and Pluto find each other interested. And it's almost instead. been a, oh, instead. It's almost been a year since they last saw each other, and Lunaterra has never seen Pluto like this. Are you ready to spin backwards? Or joy ride, kill joy. Leading in and out of the six planet rings, Memorial Foundation Ace Lunaterra plays cat and mount with a renegade ship thief Saturn. Um Joy Ride Killjoy? Okay. That's Tracy's vote. Okay, we got double Oops, Saturn super, votes here. Super Lucy Jin does did say Saturn, so I guess Ooh. we're going with Saturn. Okay, yeah, man, and Elon uh backs that up, so we're we're gonna go see Saturn. Alright. It's not a choice, by the way. You oh. you can still you still go and see Pluto afterwards. Okay, so okay. I, okay, I don't know. Yeah, but choice is made uh, later in the thing. Okay. Right. Objective in sight. Opening child to base. Captain, I'm bored. Captain, this sucks. <laughs> well, you heard him, Europa. Tell these idiots to be careful what they wish for, because the mission parameters have changed. As you know, Celestial Mechanics have been operating a clandestine ship, self-ship, self-development lab, an experimental prototype in violation of the terms of Memorial Foundation Program to Decommission Treaty. Are we on a top, and we are on a top, top secret surprise attack to take out the last operational shipyard and make sure we never have to find out what me Celestial Mechanics have been planning to do with it? You can't be more obvious what happened, but go ahead and brief me anyway. <laughs> no points on guessing. No points for guessing. The prototype's already launched, rendering most of the base in inoperable. We've lost contact almost instantly. Find it before they leave Kronos gravitational field. Oh, great. What a <laughs> pain. <laughs> Weren't you just bored? Oh, There's no way to find it. It's as good as gone. I was looking at chat. Sorry. There is a chance that the the ship cell is still nearby. So get some work. Yeah, Saturn looks pretty hot. I'm into Pluto. Um, also, I'm gay for the collar too. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> There's a chance that's, that that uh, ship cell is still nearby. So get to work. Ugh. Yeah, this is... Bravo, evade now. Huh? Now. Now. I got nothing, Cap! Bubblegum pink electricity sparks off ice and dust the inner ring of the lightning bolt and through the ship self. He doesn't get even the slightest chance. C Captain Mayday. Don't listen, you don't have any right to complain, right, Europa? What a callous attitude you have. Who did you learn that from? The best. Preparing to engage. I wish Europa would stop sending me boys who can't control themselves. Having fun dismantling my escorts. With the string of pearl... With, with the string of pearls, fingers. Saturn carefully peels the mechanical mal m mass out of the poor ship's arms she's holding. 
a souvenir of the last of Lunatera's escorts that she sent crying and, uh, too easily back to their base. It is still sparking and oozing as Saturn wishes her ship had a mouth so she could suck it out like a crab, like crab meat. <laughs> Maybe it does have a mouth. The machine is always some serious. Emmanuel didn't explain it. Had mis many mysteries Emmanuel didn't explain. Saturn is still learning them. Though I suppose Europa's learned her lesson about setting me girls who can't control themselves. <laughs> oh, really? Hey, that's pretty interesting. Mind telling me more? Oh, she's a hacker too. How amusing. There's nothing too interesting on this com, <clears throat> on this com frequency. Oh, you flatter me. But hey, what did that mean exactly? That part about the girls who can't control themselves. I really want to hear more. It means back up for that talk first. Or can you... <clears throat> you can lie the head off the comms. Lunatera's gravitation, gravitational field focuses to a single point. Lunatera's in budging. She's been through much worse. And so has her ship. Followed anyway by a thin trail from a bleeding wound she never could completely repair. The mare, Surfsum, is over two decades old, but Saturn can't even land a hit on a hit. The regal and stiff dressed cold metal metal assies. Metallic. Weathered and metallics, yeah. Weathered and refurbished. The archetypical prototype for all their ship selves. Still going on after all these years. My ship self is Where's that OC trend, huh? Mm -hmm. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that I want everyone to sort of start sorting themselves into into factions. <laughs> yeah. All right. Like freaking Hogwarts houses. Okay, I'll find out. Their... After I play all three, I'll decide what faction I'm in. I'll make an OC, and then there uh, you go. You can commission my thing. OC. <laughs> that is what everyone wants. Is I think I know what everyone's thing is. What so do you I think want I to am? See if it matches up. I think you're Celestial Mechanics. Okay, is that this one? There's that's the one that uh, Saturn's in. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Okay, we'll find out. Still furiously untouchable, this string of pearls hasn't gone down. No matter how much she's been rammed with a spear. But she hasn't even nicked Lunaterra's ship once. Not bad at all for a joyride, but you can't get one hit in. <laughs> Good thing you don't win by looking cool. I like her makeup. Mm. Oh yeah. It's like my makeup right now. <laughs> no mercy for newbies? <clears throat> no. Luna Terra put, puts a stake of solid light, light through a string of through a string of Swirl's leg, pins it down to its own gauze wrapper. It doesn't hurt at all. The ship's metals begin molding and reforming the wound immediately. A ridiculous, unfair advantage. Saturn has no right to complain, but she still wants to. But she is trying to be cool. Everyone wants to. When in when in uh, when in the quiet gleam of that always bleeding ship. That's a pretty amazing ship. I think it will last. Either you're fighting just for fun, or because you're that reckless, or you're caught in your own containment wrapper and can't escape orbit yet. And you'd beat me for sure if I played around. I'm not done yet. That's not true. <laughs> Actually, very difficult to move with solid light bullet in your leg. But she's not going to let that stop her. Turn is suddenly closer than she logically could be. Claws bubbling. But Lunaterra effortlessly slips away to kick Saturn's ship directly in the chest. Yeah, you're done. The containment wrapper is still stuck on you, so your movement's off. Doesn't seem to have stopped you that much. Right? It was so rude of them to try and s try to stop me. <clears throat> it seems cruel to take it away when you're having so much fun with it. Same as you, right? Do I know, Do I know you? Everyone knows Memorial Foundation's perfect ace. But do I know you? 
<laughs> so I do, don't I? Let me out of this thing and I'll tell you. <laughs> Why should I? Because you can't help yourself. Besides, don't you want a real fight? Can you promise it'll go different? I can promise it'll be more fun. You're asking me to totally abandon my duty to bring you back and do that instead. What? You won't? The legendary pilot who defected from Memorial Foundation, then double-crossed the rebels she abandoned them for, can't be opposed to a little fooling around with the enemy. <laughs> I guess you do know me. Want to trust each other? Or is it more fun if we don't? Okay. So this is what you decide. You decide whether or not... It's, you're not really deciding what the characters do. You're deciding on the outcome of the situation. Although it does oh, say yeah. loyal. What it means is, like, does Memorial Foundation fa get a favourable out of this? Or does Celestial Mechanics get a favourable there? Yes. <laughs> uh, well, it's Tracy's character, so Tracy gets to make the decision. Oh, do I? Crap. <laughs> Unless you don't want to make decisions for yourself. I, I, I'm, uh, I have Delta Rune energy. My choices don't matter, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Your choices do matter, honey. But you can, you can change the situation pretty yeah. easily. Like this, this one thing won't completely change the route. The route only really changes when you reach the, the last day. Okay. Well, but but then it does take into account everything you've done. You're basically you're slowly, if you get this, um, if you pick Memorial Foundation, you get a certain percentage for Memorial Foundation. If you pick the other one, you get a certain percentage for Celestial Mechanics. That's mm -hmm. how it works. Mm hmm. But frankly, it's better you just pick the one that sounds the most interesting. Yeah, I don't really care about the results right now. I don't like. Yeah. I have no loyalty to any side. Yeah. Um. I guess just do the top one. It's more interesting. <laughs> What did they do? Instead, I guess embarrassed. Huh? How was that? Did it hurt? It was weird. It was weirder that it didn't hurt much, and weirder that it doesn't hurt. It's easier for Lunatera to cut through the malleable flesh of the string of pearl, a string of pearls directly, untangle her in the wrapper. The flesh reforms quickly, so she has to work patiently. Sterner pearls might be impossible to destroy, even if Saturn can't land a hit. Lunaterra feels like somehow she's the one who got lucky. It just said, <coughs> if justice hurt you, hang on, if just. If just this hurt, you'd never be able to fight. Your brain is giving you more nuanced information. You're very sensitive. Lucky. You'll get used to it. If you're serious about next time, think of yourself as something a bit little bigger. Hmm. I like that. Being big. I'm glad I trusted you. Stop shaking then. Or ask me to go easier. Just a little easier. Course. Do you remember me yet? I thought you'd remember of at least some of the girls you've made out with in supply closets. <laughs> mm -hmm. Your face! <laughs> Just kidding. But sorry, it was worth it. You weren't kidding about being, still being dangerous. <laughs> Every pilot knows you. Both of your reputations. You're definitely Saturn, because no one hated me as much as you. So now I'm curious why you don't anymore. If I tell you, you'll owe me extra. So save it for the next time you catch me. <laughs> well, I'll just have to catch you again quick. Let me check really quick, because I'm when you realize that um uh her box is like where the chat is. Is that distracting for everyone? The boxes all move around quite a bit. Yeah, I know. 
Yeah, don't worry about it too much. Okay. It's transparent. Yeah. I mean, I made sure to get a transparent one for that reason. Yeah. I was just worried that that would be bothering people that are watching it. But anyway. Well. I'll I was just to catch you again quick. All three. Yeah, get it before someone catches us. Day two. Here we go. More of foundation, 12%. Yeah. <gasps> hmm. Just by, like, names of things, I feel like Celestial Mechanics would be the one. Because Fountainhead Foundation, you know, makes me think of the state, and I don't like the state. And yeah, they are. makes me think of religion, and I don't like religion. <laughs> so the celestial mechanic sounds like, like the one. First generation pilot candidate interviews. Leaked data packets. Place program intake archives. Why do you want to go to space? I want Else. a new start. Yeah, that's Luna Terra. Yeah, in what sense? To get rid of this weight. We are required to make it clear that the purpose of this program is not to leave Earth, but to expand it. The, the weight will follow you. But will it weigh differently? Please explain what you mean, uh, what you said previously. About what? What do you mean when you say you don't want to be me? I don't know how to say it. Isn't it obvious? Who'd want to be this? I don't... I don't understand what you mean. You see, uh, that is. Uh, I understand what you see that is wrong with you. I do. You are saying that you, as in you, the person who you are, you don't want to be you. Yes. Then you aren't that person. But that person weighs on me. So, you would like to have the weight of being this other person that you are not. You to be removed. Yes, please. That may be possible. It's pretty trans. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Uh, oh, this is uh, Europa. I will guess I'll read this. Yeah. The Cold War is looking bleak. The threat from space is more flimsy, translucent, and inscrutable than when it once was so strong that all of humanity feared it. Existential threats on Earth are more per per pernicious than ever, and the scouts are not keeping up. It has become difficult to argue against the possibility that the scouting program has done more harm than good. And that goes just as much, if not more so, for the pilot program. Historically, death has always invited the enemy here in its greatest strength. Humans can't resist killing each other long enough to protect themselves from the existential threat. It's easy to make this argument, but we've had little success with it. No matter how celebrated the slogan is, no matter how many governments and leaders profess to live by it, the simple fact remains. The existential threat can never be as powerful as we are. Humans will always pose a greater threat to other humans than the existential threats will. It will always be easier for humanity to eliminate the threat by killing their own than by fighting the threat directly. While we have offered children and the unwanted, we offered children and the we have, while we have offered children and the unwanted to fight the existential threat with existential intent. Humanity has turned its gauge inward rather than to the heavens, not even strong enough to pierce the atmosphere without burning. The existential threat can no longer be labelled as such. For those reasons, we ex accept the decision to decommission the Memorial Foundation space programme. Well. Whatever could it be referring to? How everyone looks inwards, it doesn't. They? Yeah. Excited to be out in the field again, doing important work? We're a long way from anything important out here, but I can't help but notice. You think command wants you as far away from them as they can get you? What makes you think that? That you said it, that command is my ex, and that I did once double across the memorial foundation. <laughs> in that case, you should be happy you're in the field at all, and not in a brig in the process of being shipped back to Earth. Well, I am. I'm so thankful I don't need to be lied to about my work being important. Oh, I would never lie about a thing like that. In fact, the most lovely sixth planet of our solar system, Kronos, has become extremely busy in the last 24 hours. 
A major link out of Celestial Mechanics has revealed they're finishing a prototype here, and Cradle's Graces knows about it too. Because of how these things are set, you've actually already met them, but whatever. Apparently, <laughs> the Hellion responsible for the leak has stolen it too. You're just the woman for the job. Reining in incorrigible pilots is your specialty. Let's see if that power can be used for good for once. Europa, please leave some. Uh, please leave someone who left to fight the enemy. Don't shoot me down before the mission starts. Was I too mean? I prefer direct combat any day. Well, let me tell you something nice then. That Cradle's Grace's super weapon, your favourite, has been spotted in the system. My favourite? What do you mean? Don't play dumb. You make the same face whenever Crun Macula is spotted. It's the biggest mystery on their side, and one of the only reasons Cradle's Graces hasn't collapsed by now. The cruel and peculiar power is unreal. It's far stronger in reality than anything could possibly have been projected as original schematics. Its capabilities seem endless and impossible to predict or counter. And no one knows who the pilot is. The list of people who could pilot something like that is very short. However, maybe it's someone you know. Why do I might double cross you again? I'm not with Cradle's Graces anymore for a reason. Oh, I just never trust you when girls are involved. <laughs> <laughs> Hang up. Okay, so we're just gonna go to Metrograde and Metrograde? Yeah, okay. Hey. Yeah, and then I'll, uh, maybe we'll wrap up the stream with that, because it'll probably hit two hours. Yeah, okay. Ashley, you'll take the narration then? Absolutely. Yep, and I will be Saturn. How should I be presenting you mean Saturn? Pluto. 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 Uh, yeah, what's. Des describe Pluto for. Uh, this is the uh, reason why Alexis is a perfect fit for Pluto, because she's an incredibly femme super being. Okay, cool. That's good. That's me. So, yeah. I just so I basically, I Alexis. Every one of Alexis's OCs, we've got this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I got it. What's going on? You've been pestering with order, so what's the sudden hold up? Central Psychological Media Books. <clears throat> we have not. We have to get the Celestial Mechanic Lab, regardless of whether or not the prototype is already gone. There's valuable information there, but it's worthless if Cradle's Graces get there first. Have some patience, Lunaterra. The Cradle's Graces carrier just launched a completely unknown ship self. This can't be right. A single person can't pilot a ship that big. The tidal resonance should, resonance should tear the pilot apart. This is impossible. I hope. I've never seen anything like it. And no, you can't fight it, Luna Terra, so don't even think about it. Any better ideas? It must be headed for where the prototype launched, right? Where else? Sorry, I'm drinking. Oh, okay. Because they have to know that it already escaped. Don't underestimate your opponent, Luna Terra. Scavenging in the lab may be useful anyway. We should have gone there for information, if nothing else. Even against an unknown and objectively stronger enemy? What makes you so sure, Lunaterra? No particular reason. Or a single particular reason? <laughs> Still don't trust me. Don't insult your former instructor, Lunaterra. I know how much to trust bef you before you've betrayed us to Cradle Gra Cradle's Graces. Yeah, what happened there? I knew how much to trust you before you betrayed us to Cradle's Graces. My opinion hasn't changed because we welcomed you back into the fold. My best pilot and worst student. You've never been predictable, except in your consistency for trouble, but it's a reliable metric. You're right, you know me. But if you're worried, it's like you're worried, you don't have to let me... Don't have me like, don't have to let me have free reign in this. Since you were a kid, from your earliest academy days, you've never been able to look. Oh, sorry. You've never been able to look in my eyes and lie. You only got away with anything by keeping your mouth shut. Very unlike Pluto, the hope of Cradle's Graces. She could lie right to my face with a smile if she thought it was for the best. Pluto exceeded the wildest expectations of the pilot program, so much so it was decommissioned in part because of her. 
If celestial mechanics have su successfully built a monster that can withstand her, this engagement will end in disaster. And that is much more terrifying, terrifying than this machine you're so eager to fight. That can turn, concerns me more than you betraying us or fighting a battle you can't possibly win. I don't think any of you really understood what you were doing. Pluto is unreal. She's far <coughs> more unknown than any of you understood. If that ship is unworthy of Pluto, it's going to be torn apart under the pressure of her, not their way around. Pluto's the only real human being. The one that she feels so alien when she looks at us. You want me to let you take an impossibly dangerous mission because you think you can save our enemy? <laughs> what can I say to that? Maybe she can teach you the lesson I can't. Like waking up underwater to the wet burn of your lungs' desperation for air. Like floating untethered in space, unable to move under your own power. Losing the security of gravity is like being naked in space. Gravity is necessary for human life in space. Gravity is necessary for unrestricted movement in space. Can't have one without the other. The force that binds your existence together, the force to shape modern foreign bodies, pure agency. Gravity is necessary not to just live in space, but to be human in space. But being human is a little harder for Pluto, so she has to work for it. The tidal forces of her spacefaring body, the Kron Macula, are as strong as she believes and as weak as she feels. And Luna Terra needs to make sure all the calculations are in order. Everything in her ship operates manually. She's just been at it long enough that it feels like a second skin. The jolt of nostalgia interrupts Luna Terra's mental math. She forgets to carry the one. It interrupts Pluto's focus and she has a moment where she's not invincible. Close enough to touch the surface of the moon lab, Luna Terra is seen and known by Pluto, and they are suddenly falling down the well of too late and nothing you can do. I knew it. True. Warning. Warning. Gravitational interference. You done fucked up, Luna Terra. Uh. It's important to get a grip. Knowing there's nothing you can do is something Pluto considers freeing, and Luna Terra considers exciting. Feeling doomed is clear permission to do whatever. As soon as the Mare Chrysium is through the cloud cover, she fires solid light into the remains of the Celestial Mechanics lab and chases it through the wound. The lab was recently damaged by the illegal launch of a hijacked ship, <laughs> but the damage is barely noticeable compared to the massive hole left by a much larger ship crashing through. Luna Terra acts fast under pressure. If there's no point in hiding, there's no point in stopping. It's true, Luna Terra is living on the whim of Kron Macula, which can probably do whatever it can probably do whatever to her at any time. If she can't run away, she wants to make the first move. It's the sort of thing that makes a lot of sense, but you know, a lot of sense if you think about it. And no sense at all if you think about it a little more. But that's Luna Terra, isn't it? She's betting you'll think too much or not enough. Against Pluto? Is that really such a good idea? She's someone who always thinks just enough. Which makes it easy for Luna Terra to slip through, deep into the lab, until it gets quiet, except for the sounds of the moon quaking and trembling. After almost a year, and the dread and thrill is way too much to slow down and start talking. That's what the arrow flying into Pluto's gravity well is saying. Who will make the first move? When Luna Terra punctures the last armor layer and opens up the terminal ca cavern, light spills out and scree street, uh, yeah, screaming sound because the Krun Macula is peeling the lab and most of the moon inside out with the forces of its own tides. It's not something that's impossible or anything, it's just something that's only possible in theory, which is still terrifying, more terrifying. And more terrifying than that is the power then that power is Pluto's finesse. More terrifying than the finesse is her gentleness, spooling matter like threads in the tiny galaxy of which she is the sun, Supervisor Black Hole. Mm -hmm. Her power is very kind, but it's also a little perverse. What meaning does Mercy have from something that can core out a moon? 
Crunmacula's developers compared it to a black hole. They wanted a machine so powerful and absolute, even light could not escape it. Luna Terra understands now that was wrong. She's a star, gushing and twinkling with matter and light. Who wouldn't be swept up in that? The Mare Chrysium is so small, Pluto has never seen it from a perspective like Cronmacula's before. She never imagined it would look so fragile from here, like a toy version of the fierce fighter she remembered. Pluto's sense of scale is true. Luna Terra feels just like a plastic toy, too. Hello, Katie. <laughs> Come on, say something. It's making me sad. It really fits you. <clears throat> so much more than I ever thought. Is it hard to look away? Being able to render you speechless is a power I've always dreamed of. What do you think? I know just a look won't change your mind. But I want you to tell me. Tell you what. I regret betraying you. I told you then that I always would. No, no. <laughs> I want you to do that, Luna T. <laughs> Did you think I'd be mad? I mean, of course I'm mad at you, but not for anything you did to me. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't ever be mad at you for not having enough faith in me to see through Vredos Grizz's dream of a new home for humans in space. I'm just mad at you for not having enough faith in yourself to see it through and leaving all the work to me. Oops, I guess that's why I'm a little upset with you. Not mad at you, you know? Hmm. Hold up, I, I'm pretty sure my webcam is all over her face. Can I move? Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Yeah. Uh problem is it's going to move around, but yeah. Yeah. I, if I put it in the center of the screen, it won't be there. Okay. Can I just move this webcam here? Boop. That's all. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. With the frame. Oh, there, that. <laughs> there we go. The border has to move too. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. I guess that's why I was a little upset with you. Not mad, you know. Just disappointed. I can't believe I'm still the one scolding you like a child. I'm trying to be a grown-up, you know. I did the responsible thing. I took the realistic option. I'm here to play the part of the boring adult, the grown-up villain. Oh, that's right. I remembered why I was actually mad at you. You never... You better not go down quietly. You better really believe what you just said. I'll forgive you if you just... You just left us for something stupid. But I'll never forgive you if you left us for something you didn't believe in. You better not believe it. You better not believe in it. Because I also wouldn't... I also won't forgive you for fighting for a future that cruel. It doesn't leave me a lot of options. I don't think I can fight against that. <laughs> don't you dare. I won't forgive that either. <laughs> <laughs> We're... Were you hoping maybe that I wouldn't be like this? That I wouldn't have to fight? It'll change you. In a way you don't understand. I've seen you fight so many times. I saw when you got that scar on your poor ship and got her wound. Has anyone else seen that side of you as much as me? I don't think so. Not even Europa. But it's different when you're on the other side. You think I don't really know you? Because I've never stared down a barrel neck of your rifle or felt that knife nick in my net, in my ship? It's a different kind of knowing. Teach me then. Or I'll teach you. Another choice. Okay. Mm, I feel like Flit would probably kick my ass. <laughs> you got to remember, right, like, both Saturn and Pluto are, like, really powerful, but they lack experience. Ah, okay. Yeah. But, yeah, no, Pluto's, like, super powerful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, okay. Okay, I mean, I guess, I think, I think going with Pluto learns a lesson and then losing to her later will be more satisfying. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. I don't like know. I said, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil anything because I've read this so many times. So you, you two, make your decision. What do you think? You want to get beat up by Pluto? It's your. <laughs> Uh, fine, it's fine, I guess. Here's the thing, don't forget, we can remember what we did, and then when we play through as Pluto, we can just pick the opposite options. Oh, yeah. True. Because Pluto, you essentially, you see the same scene, but you see it from her perspective, which basically, in this case, means you get a different intro, because you get the intro from Pluto's point of view. Yeah. Um... Uh... Well, I'm, I'm done with what Alexis said, I guess. Pluto, Pluto, Pluto learns a lesson? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I don't want to keep giving support to the government, but, you know, I'm trying not to think of the results. <laughs> <laughs> What's it going to be, Luna T? Oh, right. You never want to make the first move. Then I can go... Pluto sweeps up the swirling, trump, tr uh, tumbling matter in the hollowed-out moon, making the second move has always worked for Luna Terra. She's never been good at setting the pace, only outsmarting it. So it's the on so it's the only move to make. Even still, maybe there aren't any winning moves. Luna Terra has to be ready for that possibility. The Crun Macula is a very impossible sort of machine, almost as impossible as Pluto. Crun Macula can grind space-time to a crawl with its tidal forces. Crun Macula can pull ambient matter into a whirl with enough friction for the combustion to give birth to a star. Holy crap. Emotionally and almost as much physically. A tiny sun is born, but Luna Terra has just gotten out of the way. Luna Terra isn't where Pluto is expecting, and then there's suddenly a hail of bullets in her skull. Pluto doesn't mind the onslaught, but it's still shocking. Not in an unpleasant way, it's actually right very joyful. Really, really? You're not trying to you're not just trying to scare me? For real, not a joke. We're finally gonna have a fight about it? Is this body so me that you finally aren't gonna be weird about fighting it? Luna Terra thinks Pluto could lose a lesson in how terrifying actual combat can be. But is there anyone terrifying enough to teach it to her? Hey, Alexis, you're probably covering her face again. Yeah, you're probably covering oh, yeah. Pluto's face again. Just, you know. She just really wants to be you, Alexis. Yeah, clearly she's so me that I should just be my face on stream. <laughs> yep. Um, are you trying to hide from me? I've been waiting for a real fight. I'm tired of you telling me you think I'm right. If you really thought that, you'd be here on my side. So prove that I'm wrong already, or admit defeat. Bullets through her arm and chest and pretty much everywhere, but that's not a problem. Tear the bullets, even if they're light, redirect them with gravity. Pull them into a cosmic whirl, and they will never even reach her. They will always be approaching, never meeting. They will be in an infinite whirl. <clears throat> and that whirl becomes a star, washing the Mare Christium in heat and light and radiation. That's more like it. Not fast enough, Pluto. And then she runs Pluto through. It's not enough, but it hurts. It's serious. The brittle spear is out of a cold and rational metal that repels cosmic concepts. Thank God. I was beginning to worry you didn't care about anything anymore. So here. The star supernovas. Cronmacula holds the star, and Cronmacula is the star. Whoa. Lunaterra almost doesn't get out of it. Her engines overheat, and the electromagnetic current shorts her senses, and her chassis is fried but she can move more than Pluto can, or at least for long enough to get away. But I'm still ahead of you. Look at the cute face! <laughs> <laughs> now I know why everyone hates you so much. You're no fun to fight with at all! <laughs> Are you kidding? Like, you fight fair. Now that I know that this, that you're really like, I'm not gonna accept anything less. 
I don't want to do that again. Well, too bad. Whose fault is that? <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> this is the problem is you kind of have to go through these things before it lets you save for the next bit. So do you want me to read the... Yeah, yeah go ahead. Things. This is Memorial Foundation this time. But <clears throat> Ever since the day Mars began, Mars has been doomed. No, there will never be a planet Mars. That's a name reserved for places where human life, gravity and culture reign. This is just bitter Aries. But the sting stingy, inedible weeds that grow when nothing else does create... What? Oh, sorry, like. I missed the like. This is just bitter Aries. But like the stingy, inedible weeds that grow out when nothing else does, Cradle Graces is dug in and we can't get them out. The colonies are wrecked. The terraforming engines are broken. The gravity furnaces are out of control. There's no resources left on this planet. No strategic value. This planet doesn't even exist. It's an inert rock. There's no point in fighting. There's no need to fight. Ship cells can't keep you alive alone forever. And even if that was the case, we could leave tomorrow and claim victory. Most of Memorial Foundation NSES fleet already did. That's why there's barely any of us left and we can't get them out. Look, why don't I go home too and leave all these idiots to just fucking die on a rock? Who do you think we're doing this for? External communications sent from on August 31st, 1978 by Memorial Foundation troops. <clears throat> Hey, it's not like we're idiots. We know we're doomed. This planet still doesn't fulfill the requirements for human life. And life just is just the start anyway. Don't you know that gravity is something more important? Do you understand celestial mechanics, right? Matter is made of tiny particles, but, just, but enough of it exerts gravity that stitches the universe together. Culture is made of tiny humans, and enough of it together can decide what's real and what isn't. It's really quite fucked up that this is how decisions about humans get made. Enough humans can decide on anything, and then it will be true, even about what's human and what's not. They don't even have to wait for the deadline. They've already decided that any human without their feet planted on Earth is in fact not a human, and that's a pretty unusual thing for humans to do. No difference of any kind need to exist. We'll just be aliens, and then they'll send the real military after us, and we'll die. But if we just hold the line here for our princess to get through and to make it to the moon, she'll open up the gravity well and then we get to decide. Internal communications sent on January the 25th, 1981 by Cradle Grace's Irregulars. The real irregular! <clears throat> this is the thing, Celestial, I do think Celestial Mechanics, but Celestial Mechanics, in, especially in these ones, sounds so hipster. It <laughs> doesn't seem like Alexis at all. It's morning on Ares, but what's time in space? If we can get our capital ship launched and refueled and the prototype retrofitted with the final equipment, we'll have everything in place. Keep out of the canyons of Mars where Cradle's Graces and Memorial Foundation are bickering. Hold the city ruins against invading troops and make sure no one tries to set the oxygen ocean on fire while we refuel. By the way, there's an oxygen ocean. It's a pretty thankless job, but for me, I can't wait to see what happens. This is the most exciting space has ever been. Before we got here, this place was a dead rock, but the best we could ever have hoped for was Earth in a different place. Who needs that? Far in the distance, the moon's gravity well shines. If no one controls it before the deadline is up, Earth will take drastic steps to ensure that humanity is not divided. What, they'll af what they're afraid of happening, we will ensure that happens. We'll finally have something alien in space. Private communications sent on January 26, 1981, by a celestial mechanics researcher. It's Jeff. I see you, Jeff. You fuck. <laughs> Retrieving report. Alert. Report not accepted. Two errors detected. Error one. <laughs> failure on why celestial mechanics ship cell. Stream of pearls is not sex sexually apprehended. Apprehended. A failure to explain why Cradle's Gray self ship, Kurumala, was not successfully in in incapacitated. Please correct these errors before proceeding. Resubmit. <laughs> Morning, no correction submitted. Force resubmit. Generating new assignments. Penalty assignments. Sniper duty. Planet Ares. Currently held in Cradle's Grace. Prevent Celestial Mechanics refueling the Aegis. Yes. Penalty assignments. Sniper duty. Cradle's Grace. Held, plan held Planet Ares. Purpose, top secret. Take out Cradle Grace's prototype, Corn Mula, on research assignment in Cradle's Grace territory. Healthy assignments cannot be refused. 
indicate you have understood these new orders. Ye. Ye. Ready for gravitational catapult? Prepare for launch and inter into interstable systems or whatever. System. Said game. Yeah. I'll save over my save. Let's commit. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, commitment's hard. <laughs> it's a short game. You yeah, okay, know. fine. All right. <laughs> okay. So, uh, thank you all for joining us today. So, let's uh, do some wrap-up thoughts and everything. Mm. That was interesting. Oh, I'm glad you found it interesting, at least. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Who's your favorite character so far? Who's the sexiest? Uh, well, I mean, they're all hot so far. <laughs> um, I want to see some more of their chemistry. Yeah. But, uh, I mean... They're all they're all very hot, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Lunatera is pretty cool, but they're all yeah. pretty cool. It's it's it, you know they're all very cool and very hot. <laughs> yes, it's a great it's a great part. Right now, I am liking what I know of Cradle's Grace, mm -hmm. which is basically just like fuck you. We'll live in space. We're not gonna go with you cops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't really get what celestial mechanics is about. And Yon agrees with you, Tracy. Mm hmm. So, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's the thing. When I'm when I'm seeing it, I generally can't see the track chat. So sorry if, yeah, I don't think we've I've missed anything. Yeah, I'm not trying to say it out loud. Hmm. Alexis has it on her phone, but I like consciously like switch to like the Twitch window and check every now and then. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the one who has the con the stream feed constantly. I just don't touch my phone during the streams except to, you know, uh, I changed the category to have them all be mine while we were playing. I, it actually had it had a category, so that time we could be we could be the legit. I really enjoyed <laughs> doing this. Uh, we'll only be doing it when Ashley is available, so having will be mine will be an Ashley exclusive. Yay! <laughs> um, but whenever Ashley is available to stream, we'll probably play this instead of Pokemon XD until we beat it a couple of times. I assume we beat it three times at least. <laughs> um, thought we can beat it with everyone. Uh, yeah, so far, um, I I vibe with the character I voiced, but everyone is hot. Mm. Um, I really enjoyed this, and I really enjoyed Dungeons and Lesbians. I thought that was really cool. It had like, yeah. the same kind of feel that I got from like Butterfly Soup. Yeah, it, Dungeons oh. and Lesbians is really funny, and this is like interesting. And it's in a different way. Yeah. It's a lot more hyper. <laughs> All yeah. these things we read. Um, but it certainly establishes the tone. Yeah. I'm super into it. Like, I would play it on my own off the stream, but I kind of want to yeah. save my reactions for the stream. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely also be willing to play off stream. But I guess whenever we're hanging out, we can just be playing on stream anyway. Yeah. We can just stream all the time. I don't really mind. <laughs> but I just want a break for a little bit. I could start streaming again later. <laughs> I'm not doing anything else today. I, I literally got no other plans. I mean, I'm supposed to write like a fem slash fic, but to, this is today's fem slash thing. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to make you take a nap. How about that for plan for the rest of your day? Yeah, I agree there. I have lovely <laughs> makeup. Do you want me to mess up my makeup? Oh, that's true. Can't have that. <laughs> Check me. I'll, I'll I'll try to nap. Even I'll I'll, I'll risk ruining my makeup. <laughs> Maybe I never mind. I won't nap. I'll never do anything. Yeah, you guys are just getting the intimate reactions of me and Tracy and Ashley now. Seriously though, uh, thank you all for coming and joining as always. Uh, how did you all like the visual novels uh, as compared to Pokemon? Do you like us doing this and the voices and everything? Uh, would you like to see more of them? And if you have any requests for games for us to play, as always, uh, you can send them in a DM to me, Tracy, Ashley, or respond to any of my tweets. You can respond to a tweet talking about fascism and just say, hey, why don't you play Pokemon <laughs> Mystery Dungeon Explorers in Time and Space on this stream? <laughs> and not comment at all on what I'm talking about. And I will be receptive and get that and try my best to get that game ready. <laughs> because I am... his conversations to tell you about video games to play. 
I will do literally whatever for followers and views. I need money. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, to so check out my stream and make sure to like and comment and subscribe if you're on YouTube. Hit that notification bell if you hit the subscribe button. It's like right there where this is where the button was. Uh, I'm at patreon.com backslash Alexa Sarah. And you can hear these other cute people on their links. Oh, also twitter.com slash at transcomics. You can see all my hot selfies. <laughs> Love y'all. Bye, everybody. Wait, you get you vlog yourselves? Oh right, okay. Yeah. Bye, hey everyone. Uh, I will uh, I was uh, Ashley here. You can find me on at Yo Smith on Twitter. And um that's about it at the moment for me. <laughs> so come in and just see me randomly retweet a load of people. But hey. <laughs> oh yeah, but you can find a lot of my writing. I do a lot of occasional guest writing on Akazu. And hey, yeah, I got an article out. I got an article about Lady Killer and a Bind out on Anime Feminist. Read that. You have an article about this game? Yeah. Oh yeah, and I have an article about this game on Okazu, Okazu yeah. yeah. But I'm gonna I'm gonna get a lot more articles about this game out because if you hadn't noticed, I love it. Yes. And I love oh, yeah. what it discusses. I, I am loving the love for this game radiating off of Ash. It does get me more invested in my role. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it adds I a do lot. Like, I do like how um, you both picked like two interesting characters, and I was like, oh, no matter which characters you pick will be interesting. And of course, Alexis picks like the super god lady, which makes sense. But Tracy, of course, playing Luna Terra, which I kind of didn't expect, because Luna Terra, as I think we've noticed here, has a long romantic history. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, she's had like so many girlfriends and everything. <laughs> she's like... just that hot. <laughs> yeah, she is just that hot, yeah. But what I love is like she doesn't like she's not like a super like overconfident jerk about it, so it sort of always catches me off guard no matter how many times I read it where they're like <laughs> where she's like oh you know I'm kind of useless, you know no one really should matter about me I'm pretty crap I just get by on my you know old ship because I'm trying to do stuff, and you know I also made out with three girls on the way to it but whatever that's just life. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm old. Yes. That's just a fact of my life. I do that every yeah. day. I mean, there are only a few like named characters with, um, with actual lines in this game. They keep the cast relatively small. Um, bloody, there are three X's of Luna Terra in the cast. <laughs> <laughs> Have we met a few? We've of met them? one of them. Yeah, okay. we've met one X of Luna Terra already. Yeah. yeah. We haven't met the other two. Okay. All right, cool. I, I look forward to my many exes. Yeah. <laughs> I am excited. And Tracy, what about you? What you... Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm, uh, you can find me at Minx Tracy on Twitter or support me at patreon.com forward slash Tracy Campbell. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much me. Uh, I just I just like tweet about stuff randomly. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and um, Louise Ashley, Yo Pain, uh, yeah. also has a podcast called the LHC Podcast. Yeah. Oh yeah, I have the LHC Podcast, and I've got on my uh, got and Hugh's been very nice and has changed all of the icons and everything to my new name as well, which is very nice. Ah, yes. nice. So I noticed that. Louise... I subscribe to your YouTube. Yeah. Now it's the Louise and Hugh Collision. Yeah. Nice. So yes, and we're having a lot. Of, we're having a big, long series about Sword Art Online. So if you want to hear uh, two people, two friends, chat about Sword Art Online and sort of collectively tear their hair out about how bad it is, then go ahead and get to, go ahead and listen to the LHC. I started listening to a Good Place podcast, and it was excellent analysis. Um, I highly, highly suggest oh, checking them out. I was on a couple of episodes uh, in the past. Um, I'm going to drag Alexis onto my new podcast. I'm launching soon. Rest ooh. assured. Yes. So what's that? Tell me, do you want to tell me about it? Do you want to tell us about it? What's, what's this new podcast? Well, eventually, I haven't got it yet, but I've got a lot of people interested, hopefully, in doing interviews. Uh, my current working title is Simply the Best, but I think that's already been taken by another <laughs> podcast. It's simply where I go in and I talk about the things that I love the most with one other person. That's cool. Absolutely. Who also wants to talk about it? Hopefully, I will have a few people to discuss Lady Killer. I will certainly have uh, E. Jackson on to talk about Heaven Will Be Mine because we're both incredible nerds about it. 
And like I said, I have several things I want to talk to Alexis about on it. And unlike the LHC, which is sort of like very regimented and we kind of have to make um, allowances for both Q and myself in that, you know, it's about both of us learning cooperation. Um, this one will just be me just wallowing on stuff I love the most with, <laughs> no, with absolutely no thing to really even care, even about the guests who are very nice and giving me their time. No, I'm just going <laughs> to use them as soundboards to spark my own massive agenda. Well, well, see if you can overpower I... my dominant will of <laughs> controlling a conversation. That will well, be interesting, actually, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, uh, you can... Dom v. Dom combat. Well, you can have it your guest list, if you like. Yes, Absolutely. Uh... <laughs> I, I'm not saying the guest list now, apart from E. Jackson, who's the one who's definitely confirmed. Nice. Anyway, yeah. uh, yes, okay, and uh, also me and Tracy are on podcast on youtube.com backslash trans podcast, right? No, it's SoundCloud. SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash trans podcast. I, I don't know why, I just thought of youtube.com, it's not slash girlfriend quest because we don't have a custom yeah. URL. Um, you just yeah, need to search uh, girlfriend quest and find our videos. The, uh, next week, the last episode of true selves that we've recorded uh should be going up on monday so uh subscribe yeah. um yeah yeah um that'll be exciting it's a really good episode i really enjoy it um i'm very excited for you all to listen to it and hopefully we'll be able to make more of those episodes um we don't know uh, it's all about schedules uh but me and tracy are looking at making all sorts of content not just these youtube stuff and Twitch streams and everything. Um, so hopefully you enjoy everything we do. And we want to do a different kind of uh, tabletop podcast if we can't do more episodes of True Cells for a while. Um, yeah, so again, uh, thank you so much for listening. I'm going to go ahead and end the stream here. Uh, yeah, bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>